on things like the rest of the unemployment because they get the numbers wrong. <laughs> I mean, there's no other way to put it. Um, they get the numbers wrong. And that's going to cause them to do things like miscalculate how much stimulus is needed before they go into recess. So this is a really a problem that's going to hurt people. It, it, the lies are going to turn into bad policy, which means wrong action, which means that you're going to have, um, you know, the wrong thing is people are going to, well, they're just going to suffer. <laughs> Another way to put it. Um, one of the secretary generals of a... Um, of, of a large uh, country's National Olympic Committee is a connection of mine on LinkedIn, follow me around, commenting to my stories, uh, liking my stories, and, and it's been there for like more than 20 years. So that's the kind of people that we're attracting uh, in, in LinkedIn. Nine states, nine states have mobile betting out of 50 states plus DC, plus Puerto Rico, plus Virgin Islands, and plus territories. So that's way less than 20% are legal for mobile sports betting. And if you don't have mobile sports betting, you don't have anything viable, okay? <laughs> it doesn't count unless those are all those conditions are met and the wire act stands in the way and it's gonna be a problem, you're gonna see this. But even if not, just go from where we are now, nine states, okay? That's less than 20%, not counting territories, Virgin Islands, DC, Puerto Rico, et cetera, okay? So to say sports gambling is a legal operation in the United States, okay? Uh, fantasy gambling Pepsi challenge. So I've had this in my head for quite a while. We should come up with some way to uh, put up a pep like a Pepsi challenge. This was, I think, from the 80s uh, to challenge the DFS and gambling guys to, uh, to a public challenge as to who's got the better product. Uh, I think there's 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 legs here. I think we could probably find sponsors for this and make something out of this. Um, Facebook ban on political ads. Yeah, good luck with that. Um, that is a great thought, and I love it, and I would applaud it with with a lot of fanfare. But it's guaranteed guaranteed uh, class action lawsuits from your shareholders, and you're probably going to lose. So just factor all that in. Um, Universal basic income, I think, is being tested right now with COVID-19 <laughs> through the various support programs. Uh, I think that that's really what you're seeing is a minimum basic income test on a wide scale, not uh, voluntarily. Um, and I think that ASM is a key to uh, that. I see ASM as a stimulus concept, okay, you know, that it's, it's net uh, pr uh, product will be will be an increase in economic activity and and therefore you know act as stimulus and therefore raise the the general uh, well-being up to a point where universal basic income is something that's um, obtainable worldwide not just here I mean I, I I've got a post from more than I think it's about 12 13 years ago about this that the ultimate uh, you know the per, per the point of uh, sports uh, markets and and turning sports performance into an asset class is uh, is full employment. So so there's there's some dovetailing going on here. There's some things that are happening just to show uh, what happens in the economy broadly if you just uh, make sure there's a minimum level. It doesn't mean everybody's there, but it means that's a level you don't fall below. And of course, people can excel beyond that, uh, you know, according to their talents and ambition. But you know, don't let them get below a certain point. And how does that affect productivity? And, you know, what do people do when they collect unemployment? And do they work on things? Or do they just sit around and watch television? I, I don't, I mean, I don't know the numbers on that. But I, most people, the ones that I know, uh, they're, they're still working and trying to get their things back going and doing all that. They're not sitting around um, watching television all day long on Netflix and, and drinking a, a beer or whatever. That That's, so, you know, what happens when you take the pressure away that uh, you don't have to, uh, you know, worry about starvation, right? That, that, that basically is, is the, that comes off the table and then you know that you're not going to starve and then you take it from there as far as your work income and, 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 and talents will take you beyond that, right? 
So surge in COVID-19 for the second time in, in almost 20 years of data. Well, I mean, live data started in 2013. 2014 was the live market. 2013 was the beta. It's the first, first time in, in all of that time. So there's about seven, six years of run time, first time, and five, six years of run time this time. In both instances, I've never seen uh, volume drop like precipitously and it did it again it did it uh when the lockdown started then started to come back now the lockdown is i mean the the spikes come again and there's talk of lockdowns and the volume again took a big drop and then it's star starting to creep so this is this tells me again in case you didn't see the last video that this covid 19 thing is a really serious public event in terms of how it affects what people pay attention to so People are not paying attention to ASM or anything sports related when this spike, uh, you know, it takes all their attention. That's that's what this tells me. Uh, more than anything that has ever happened across this timeline, across the entire timeline of observ observability of ASM market, this is the second time ever that something so drastic has happened so fast and it can be indexed to a public event. So standard equity investments and teams have problems. This is, this is why you don't see big groups of teams and leagues offering private investment as, and making teams into standalone units. There's a lot of issues in their league relationships and the way independence that they want between the teams and the structures and the agreements that pre prevents, and, and this is not to talk our book. I'm just, look at the market. You don't see... Uh, very many cases of sports teams having private investment or being public or even private companies that you hear about, right? You just don't hear it. That's the reason that, you know, the, the Green Bay is the only real example that anybody knows about. And that's what, like, you know, it's 70 years old or whatever. So th there is an inherent problem there in, in, in raising capital through standard means for sports teams, okay? They don't like people looking at their books. It's kind of like the Hollywood stuff here. They like, there's a lot of hidden stuff in accounting games and they like to keep it quiet. So when you become public company, you got to report all that stuff and they don't want all that. And you know, actually you can go back and look at the, uh, um, the movie box office receipts contracts discussions to see how the Hollywood guys torpedoed the movie box office contracts uh, because of not wanting to reveal information they'd have to reveal if they raised money from public markets for their uh, films and stuff. So it's very much the same. So uh, that's why you haven't seen it. That's why you won't see it in any meaningful way. It's, it's, it's something that could have happened at any point along the timeline to this moment. Uh, you, can, you can form a company as a corporation, LLC, SPAC, whatever. There's nothing that stops that from happening right now. But why doesn't it happen? It's because of those things, okay? So our proposition is investing in sports performance, okay? It's not the investment in the, the assets and liabilities. It's investment in the performance of the team rather than betting on the performance of the team. And that is something new. That is something that we have patent pending and issued on. Well, patent issued on SRI, patent pending on ASM. Uh, this is not done before. This is our unique proposition. This is a, um, a, a, an evolution of the Green Bay concept. And that's why we have something that is valuable for the market. And that's why we persist with the project and, and getting it to market because we know it's a unique, it's, 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 it's absolutely not out there and it never has been. Um, okay, so um, we do not, I, Okay, here's another false statement I want to cover. Okay, 100% false. We do not need income from the leagues into all sports market to make the model work. That is another lie. Okay. I have never said that. That is not something that I have ever agreed to at any point in time. People have said this before regarding the dividend reserves and the fact that you had to have external sources. Alper says no. Alper is the economist. And the mathematical proof will be forthcoming in a few months. Okay? 
it probably will be a little longer than a few months to get it all the way through, but we can prove that is a false claim. I have not said that. What I said was we need the participation of the leagues to create the depth of the market, to create the activity, to bring in the uh, attention, to create the trading volumes, to make the markets thick, and to make them function. Not to take money from them, but to pay them. We pay them. We do not take money from them, and it is not required that we take money from them. We split our revenues in half, okay? So you liars that keep saying this stuff, stop. That is something I have never said. You misinterpreted my claim and my statements from an audio recording. It is not the income from them. It is our remission to them of half our income and their corresponding increase in activity because they publicize the market, okay? Every other income stream related to uh, partnerships for uh, promotion of products, selling of jerseys, and all those things we talked about on the team pages has nothing whatever to do with the functioning of the model and the valid uh, math behind the ASM market itself, okay? So once and for all, to say that we have to have other income into the dividend reserves or some other way of bringing money in other than the way the model is presently configured is a lie. It is 100% false. Okay, next item. The idea behind the eSports bridge is not meant to be a change or this is what we have to do to get everything to work. I said this about a year ago, eight months ago, that the, that if we can come up with a way to create an esports piece that will give them a bridge between here and real, real uh, play on the field with fans in the stand, back to normal, okay? Not this cocked up mess of, 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 Sometimes you can go with a mask, sometimes you can't, sometimes you social distance. I mean, when it's like it was back in, you know, a year ago, nine months ago. Until that day comes, there needs to be some way to get from the stop to the start, okay? And I saw that as the bridge uh, being some configuration of esports. I don't have that figured out yet, okay? I don't know what that is. That is a, a, a creative problem solving exercise, but I know if we can insert that into the, the, the package that we can be a bridge from the status quo to, to return to normal, that we not only have a package that is going to be really, really interesting to everybody, it's also something that we can probably package up in a SPAC like DraftKings did and raise real investment capital to build out the esports platform and the ASM platform and give our insiders liquidity and all of those things basically the DraftKings did with no profitability, okay? None, getting worse by the day. Wait till the Q2 2020 numbers hit, you'll see. But that model has opened up a universe of interest in SPACs. There's like 20 of them on deck. So if we wanna get more than 20, so if this is, that's not necessarily, you know, I'm just looking at a pack. It's all about packaging when you go to the investment community. So if there's a way, so the first thing to figure out, is there a way to create that bridge? You know, uh, is NASCAR a, ma a model? And if there is, then let's look at it. Ace has a contact now in esports here in LA, and he's got the studio with sound stages. So it is possible for us to come up with an esports platform and bankroll it uh, if we can figure out what the market wants and what would fill that gap. And then we can package all of that together and then uh, make an investment proposition out of it for, for the uh, ASM corporate side, okay, in, in a SPAC. So Madden 2020, kind of like a Madden 2020 plus Robin Hood for sports SPAC, okay? Let me say that again. Madden 2020 plus a Robin Hood for sports SPAC investment proposition, okay? 
So that's that's what we're going to talk about next week on the uh, the first t recorded video team conference uh, video that we've had in a while. So uh, program members will get a copy of that. Program members mean people who have uh, since Christmas of 2019, actually since December 1st of uh, 2019, uh, participated in any funding program uh, that we had out, uh, the sports shares or anything else, GoFundMe, anything that was out there in that period of time since December 1st. And a quick update, I've got all the materials and the parts and everything ready. Uh, next week, I'm going to produce the all the materials all and 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 um, by by Monday. So um, this is Monday. So um, uh, actually, this is Sunday. So uh, one week and one day from now, at the latest, everyone will have received their um, confirmation emails from Pitney Bowes that will show the shipping of those items that were owed from about February ish. Uh, all the way until everything is shut down. So that will bring everything up to date. Um, Disney World reopened flop. Uh, shouldn't have done it. So, okay. Uh, if you're a Republican, check out the Lincoln Project, please. Um, USA Today had a story today about uh, concerns that the sports industry is going to consume critical COVID-19 supplies in this uh, absolutely misplaced restart of sports uh, too soon. Make America Again, okay? This is a slogan that I uh, heard on an audio book uh, that I um, listened to a couple days ago. It really struck me. I think that's it's pretty profound, actually. I like it. Make America Again. Make America Again. Okay. The world is run by the people who show up, not the people who sit behind their keyboards and throw stones and, and bitch and gripe and moan and, and do nothing. The world is, 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 is run by the people who show up and do stuff every day. Be one of those people if you want to change the world, if you want to make a difference. Don't be a spectator. Losers are spectators. Go out and do something with your life. So thank you very much for your attention. Please stay safe. We've got a tough time coming here. Um, looks like uh, we're going to head back into lockdown because we can't get our politics and uh, science coordinated, unfortunately. So have a nice uh, what's left of the uh, weekend, and I'll speak with you next uh, Sunday night. Bye now.